Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at two CPA questions that deals with the time value of money. That's an important topic, an extremely important topic on the CPA exam. These questions are sent by one of my subscribers at farhatlectures.com. At farhatlectures.com, I cover this topic in detail. So these, these questions are from a third party. The individual wanted to know a little bit more if I can go over them. I believe those questions are considered advanced questions, but we're gonna go over them. If you can understand how we solve these problems, then you should be comfortable with the time value of money and especially computing the present value of money. The present value of money is very important because it covers bonds, leases, projected benefit obligation, notes payable. All these topics, they would assume or they would require you to be very comfortable with the time value of money. How can I help you? Go to farhatlectures.com. I have plenty, plenty of resources. Matter of fact, before every one of my CPA FAR courses, whether it's Becker, Roger, Wiley, or Glime, I do have lessons about time value of money. Before you start, you want to make sure you are comfortable with that topic. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first question. Best Inventor has developed and patented a computer chip that allows telecommunication and sports event to become more efficient. BI agrees to sell the patent to the New York Jets for five annual payments of $50,000. The payments are to begin three years from today from today, given 6% interest rate, what's the present value of the payment? What I like to do with these questions is to show it to you on a timeline. Okay, zero is today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You may not need ten, but I'm just gonna show you what's gonna happen. We sold the patent today. We get rid of it today. The payments are to begin three years from now. One, two, three. So the first payments start here. And we're gonna have five payments of 50,000. 50,000, 50,000, 50,000, 50,000, and 50,000. The question is how much, what's, because we need to record the present value of the payment here, uh, of the, the present value of the payments here, because we sold something, therefore we made the sale. How much do we record this payment for? That's the question. Well, how can you solve this problem? Well, there's two ways to solve this problem. First, I'm going to solve it in a way to help you understand uh, what we are doing. So you have five payments. This looks like an annuity. The only thing is, this is a deferred annuity. That's why it's an advanced question. It's a deferred annuity. So how would I solve this question? I'm going to solve it in two different ways. The first way I'm going to solve it, I'm going to assume I am at year two. If I am at year two, I am looking at an ordinary annuity with five annual payments, so n equal to five, i equal to 6%. So the first thing I'm gonna find out is how much those five payments worth here at year two, because this is, this is what I know. This is when you learn annuity, this is what you learn. So go to your table, present value of an annuity, ordinary annuity, n equal to five, i equal to six, and the factor it's going to be 4.212. I'm going to go up here and take my 50,000, multiply it by 4.212, and that's going to give me $210,600. So I, this annuity is worth at year two $210,600. Now, I don't care about year two. They're asking me how much this annuity is worth. I'm sorry. How much is this amount? Not annuity now. This is a single amount. How much is this single amount worth today? All what I have to do now is discount this payment two periods using 6%. So now I'm going to go to the present value of one of one payment, two periods, 6%, and the factor is 0 0.089. So I'm going to take my, my, the value of 200, Two hundred ten thousand six hundred dollar a year two, and discount it at point eight nine, and I'm gonna get one hundred eighty seven thousand four hundred and thirty four, and this will be the answer because that's that that's what they're asking me now. How what would be the journal entry for this? If you're interested, you will debit notes receivable for that amount. You will credit sales for that amount. So your sales is for 187434 and you have a note receivable because you're going to be receiving the money later on. Now the difference between what you what you would receive 
what you would receive really is in total you're going to be receiving 250,000 notice you're going to be receiving 250,000 the difference it's going to be interest revenue but the sale actually is 187,434. So this is one way to compute this. And the reason I did it this way is to illustrate the concept of an annuity. So first I worked it as an annuity for year two. Then from the annuity, I discounted it using a single payment. Now, how, how else can you do this? Well, how else can I do this? What I would say, what I would do, I would go to the annuity table. And what I need to do, this is a, if you count the years, let me just count the years here. Let me erase everything and just keep the years okay oops let me just count the years we have seven years in total seven years in total what i would do is i will take the annuity of seven minus the annuity of two and i will find the answer as well what do i mean by this so i'll go to the annuity table and i would say the total period is seven therefore the present value is 5.582 at six percent 5.582 so i'm going to take 5.582 which is this is the annuity factor for seven but i'm going to have to take out of it two years because two years i won't be receiving any payment so what i would do is i will go to two years 1.833 and I will subtract from this 1.833. And that's going to give me a factor of 3.74899. And that's my factor. Now I'll take my factor multiplied by 50,000. Let's do that. I want to I want to double check myself as well. So if I'm going to take 50,000 times 3.74894, 187.447. That's rounding, but 187.434. 180. 7 they give me 447 it doesn't matter 434 just rounding rounding so this is basically how else you can how the other method that you can uh, use the third payment so take the the seven you have seven periods minus two where you don't receive anything and you will find the factor i like to do it both ways so this way you, you are comfortable with both and so remember remember here what they said they said and the reason i'm going to say this because we're going to go to the next problem the payment are to begin three years from now it means this is zero one two three so the payment will start three years from now this is one two three this is three years from now Let's take a look at this question. What amount should George invest now at 12% to provide five payments of 5,000 at the end of each year starting three years from now? This is what this problem looks like. Today is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what's the present value? The payment it's going to give George 5,000 at the end of each year, starting three years from now. So three years from now is one, two, three. At the end of three years, it means at the end of the year, it means the first payment George would receive is here. So the first payment that George would receive is at the end of year three, which is 5K. So George would receive 5K, 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 one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is what George is looking at from a timetable perspective. I always like to show you this because once you see this, it's easier. So be careful how the problem is given to you. If you assume the payment starts at the beginning of year three, it makes a difference versus the end of year three. Starting year three and it's at the end of year three. Okay, now how do we, how do we solve this again? Now we have eight periods eight periods and we're going to subtract from the eight periods three periods that we don't that we don't receive any payments so now n we're going to find n equal to eight and n equal to three at interest rate so n equal eight minus n equal three and the interest rate is 12 percent let's find the factor i mean can i do it the way that i did it earlier sure but i already made the point so it's um, you know, you know, you already, I already made the point. So we're dealing with 12%. First, let's find the three. Oh, let's find the eight. The eight will be someplace. Whoops, this is the present value table. Be careful. So we're going to go to 12, present value of an annuity, 12%, eight, 12% and eight. That's 4.968. And we're going to subtract three. 
and that's going to be 2.402 2.402 again this is going to be rounding because it's going to be some rounding issues but that's fine so we're going to take uh this is the factor is 4.968 again it's going to be a little bit of rounding it doesn't matter i'm just making the point 4.4.02 now i'm going to deduct those again i can do it in two steps the way i did it earlier but this is you know but you don't have to do that 4.968 minus 2.402 that's going to give me a factor of 2.566 2.566 i'm going to multiply this amount by 5k 5000 let's do that let's get this amount multiplied by 5000 and it's going to be 12830 oh good 12830 it's 12829 again it's because of the rounding so that's the answer look when you go to the exam when you go to the exam day the time value of money is critical why because if you don't know the time value of money you won't be able to solve any bonds problem any notes payable any pension any deferred taxes any notes long-term notes receivable long-term notes payable bonds so in my courses so when you go sign up for my cpa course so if you sign up for wiley or for roger or for becker it doesn't matter which one you sign up for you'll have access to everything or glime the first thing i do one of my first module is time value of money because if you don't know the time value of money you cannot pass the exam don't even think about it don't even attempt the exam if you are not 100 percent comfortable with that topic i can make you 100 percent comfortable with my explanation resources multiple choice questions good luck study hard i'm always here to help you the CPA is a lifetime investment. Don't shortchange your.